Hello, welcome to Tupida World. This is Miss Jazz, and we're going to talk about micropropagation. First, let's define the word micropropagation. When we say micropropagation, that is a practice of rapidly multiplying stock plant material to produce a large number of progeny plants using modern plant tissue culture methods. Also, this is used to multiply noble plants such as those that have been genetically modified or breed through conventional plant breeding methods. Micropropagation is also used to provide a sufficient number of plantlets for planting from a stock plant which does not produce seeds or does not respond well to vegetative reproduction. In Cornell University, one botanist there, Frederick Companion Seward, was discovered and pioneered this process and he also pursued this propagation and plant tissue culture in the late 1950s and early 1960s. We have also stages in terms of micropropagation. First, we have the establishment. Actually, it is begins with a selection of plant material to be propagated and the plant tissue are removed from an intact plant in a sterile condition. The second process we have here, the multiplication after establishment. This process is taking off tissue samples produced during the first stage and increasing their number. And through repeated cycles of this process, a single explant sample may be increased from one to hundreds and thousands of plants. Also, multiplication process, if the tissue is grown as a small plant called plantlets, Hormones are often added that cause the plantlets to produce many small offshoots. The third process we have the pre-transplant. Actually, this stage involves treating the plantlets or shoots to produce to encourage root growth and hardening. It is performed in vitro or in the sterilized test tube environment. When you see the word the Hardening, it refers to the preparation of the plants for a natural growth environment. Until this stage, the plantlets have been grown in ideal conditions and designed to encourage rapid growth. The next stage we have here, the transfer from culture. So after establishment, multiplication, pre-transplant, we have here to transfer to the ideal and natural environment. In the final stage of plant micropropagation, the plantlets are removed from the plant media and transferred to soil or more commonly potting compost for continued growth by conventional methods. This stage is often combined with the pre-transplant stage. As you can see here, we have the stage 1 selection, the mother plant, establishment, multiplication, and also the pre-transplants, and also the transfer to the soil. Actually, there are also advantages and it has disadvantage when it turns to the micropropagation. The advantages of this process is the production of many plants that are clones for each other. So, if the species are going to endangered, by using this process, it prevents into lost. Next is, micropropagation can be used to produce disease-free plants, which is commonly plants produce disease and also, and it makes the one in sneak, so this process can limit that situation. Also, it can have the extraordinarily high fecundity rates in producing thousands of propagules, while conventional techniques might only produce a fraction of this number. It is the only viable method of regenerating genetically modified cells or cells after protoplast fusion, and also it is useful in multiplying plants which produce seeds in uneconomical amounts or when plants are sterile and do not produce viable seeds or when seed cannot be stored. Also, micropropagation often produce more robust plants, leading to accelerated growth compared to similar plants produced by conventional methods, like 
seeds or cutting. Some plants with very small seeds, including most orchids, are most reliable grown from seed in sterile culture. A greater number of plants can be produced per square meter and supropagules can be stored longer and in a smaller area. Now let's move on to the disadvantage. Actually, this process is very expensive and you can have a labor cost of more than 70%. A monoculture is produced after micropropagation, leading to a lack of overall disease resilience as the progeny plants may be vulnerable for the same infections. Also, the disadvantage, an infected plant sample can produce infected progeny, and this uncommonly as the stock plants are carefully screened and vetted to prevent cultural plants infected with virus or fungus. Not all plants can be successfully tissue cultured, often because the proper medium for growth is not known or the plants produce secondary metabolic chemicals that stunt or kill the eggs plant. Sometimes plants are cultivars and do not come through to true type after being tissue cultured. This is often dependent on the type of explant materials utilized during the initiation phase or the result of the age of the cell or propagule line. Some plants are very difficult to disinfect of fungal organisms. Actually, the major limitation in the use of micropropagation for many plants is the cost of production. For many plants, the use of seeds, which are normally disease-free and produced in good numbers, readily uh, produce plants in good number at the lowest cost. For this reason, many plant breeders do not utilize micropropagation and because the cost is prohibitive. Other breeders use it to produce stock plants that are then used for seed multiplication. A mechanization of the process could reduce labor costs but have proven difficult to achieve despite active uh, attempts to develop technological solution. So thank you for listening to Peter World. I hope you learned a lot about micropropagation. Propagation. Thanks.